Hello, everyone. Welcome to our fifth and final day of the APH Virtual Excel Art Camp for four to six year olds. We have been having loads of fun watching you create beautiful artwork of your home and of rooms and the outside of your home. Can't wait to see what you create today. I'll say one more time as people are coming in. Welcome to the APH Virtual Excel Art Camp for four to six year olds. We are glad to have you with us. We had one person send us their actual photo in. Mila sent us her photo of her home. So Mila is actually in the picture with beautiful pink glasses and a lovely smile. She even has a pink bow in her hair. She is holding her rectangular picture up that has a blue door with a silver door handle. It is in the center of the page and on either side are triangular shaped green trees in pots or plants in pots. There's a green bottom underneath each pot, maybe to think of grass or garden. And there's a black piece underneath the door, maybe like a doormat. Thank you so much, Mila, for sharing. I have stopped sharing. I'm glad to have all of you with me today. I am going to give this over to your two instructors, Miss Erica and Miss Michelle. They are all yours. Good afternoon, campers. It's Miss Erica. Um, today I have on my dark glasses and my hair is down and I have a black t-shirt on. So, and my blue back, my light blue background, which might look gray on your screen. Hi campers, it is Miss Michelle here and I have my dark blue background and my black framed glasses and I have on a black top as well with my white earbuds coming out of my ears. It might look like thin little earrings or a little line, but I am here. And Miss Erica and I are so happy to have you guys back with us for the last day. We hope that you guys have had as much fun this week as we have. And for today on our final and fifth part, um, day of camp, we are going to be talking about identifying the key features in your neighborhood or in a favorite neighborhood location, okay? Um, so we also want to remind you that we will at what some point ask if you'd like to have your cameras on. And if you do, that means that your families have given you permission to be in the recording and make sure that when you do talk that you have a quiet background. You all have been doing such a great job at raising your digital hands and typing in the chat, waiting until you're asked to have it open or waiting until um, or listening for those special sounds each day to have the chat closed. So we appreciate that and we know you're going to continue to do a great job today. So to get started today, um, we had a few of our campers yesterday. We had Donnie, Tristan, and Ariana who had said that they wanted to share the map they were working on during camp yesterday and didn't quite have a chance to because we ran out of time. But if you three would still like to share, when we get a chance, we're gonna have you first, if you'd like to have your cameras turn on, raise a digital hand. And once those are all on, we'll give you a cue um, for how to let us know if you'd still like to share, okay? So we'll give a little pause and let those hands go up for the, cameras being turned on and once that is all done we will have Miss Leanne let us know. I've caught all but Claire at the moment. Hers is not moving over. Should we moved there over we now? Oh, yep. Miss Michelle, do you have that list of people? I sure do. So 
let's, I want to start, I see a digital hand raised by Calvin G. Calvin, if you have a question before we get started, I'm going to ask you to unmute yourself so that you can ask your question. And if you need a little bit of help with unmuting yourself, you can type H in the chat to let us know. Calvin G, I, I do see you. I want to get back to you. So I'm not I'm not ignoring you. I just want to give a little um, pause. I see your hand up. If you're able to unmute yourself in a little bit, we'll come back to you. In the meantime, Donnie, Tristan, and Ariana yesterday had said that they would like to share the map that they were working on during camp, which was either more details at the entrance to their home, their front yard, their backyard, or the front of their school. Mm -hmm. So Donnie, Ariana, and Tristan, if you would still like to share today from yesterday, please raise a digital hand. I see Ariana's hand up. Actually, I'm not seeing Tristan on the screen. So maybe just Ariana. Okay, Ariana, you may unmute yourself and go ahead and share your map that you worked on during camp yesterday. Okay, so- um, Tell them what you added. Um, so I added my stairs, my mat, and my walls and my door. And this is actually my window, and and the texture I pick is like the bumpy, scratchy one. That's the red one. Wait, what did you use for your stairs? Um, uh, I used the, the yellow foam. Hold that in front of your camera. Oh, nice. I like the different textures you use. What color are your stairs? Uh, they're, they're green. Your stairs are green? Yeah. Thank you so much, Ariana. So I see in the chat, Donnie needed, um, typed a Y. I know yesterday he was having some trouble with his digital hand. So Donnie, thank you for remembering from yesterday that you can type a Y in the chat. That was a good reminder for me too. So Donnie, if you'd like to unmute yourself and share your map. Also, I see in the chat that Penelope would like to share hers from yesterday if there is time. And I do think we have some time for that. So we'll make, make that a, um, an option after Donnie. Okay, go ahead, Donnie. Um, um, I do. Uh -huh. I never got my supplies. Oh. My art supplies. They are on their way, Donnie. We got our address connected. When you get your supplies, what are you going to do? A map. You're going to make a map. Very cool. Will you please send me that when you are a picture of it when you get done? Thank you. Thank you, Donnie. Thank you, Donnie. I see that. So next we're going to go to Penelope. It did also look like Calvin G was able to unmute. So Calvin G, once Penelope is done, we will come to you if you have a question still. Do you want to show them? Do you want to talk about your map? Oh, Penelope, this looks very interesting. Can you tell us about your map? Can you tell them? Do you want to tell them? No? What did you use for the for the windows on the garage? She used googly eyes for the windows on the garage. I, <laughs> I love it. That. She had bumpy dots for Five. the windows. And Five. she did the corrugated paper in blue for the blue door. 
Yeah. And she put some tiles on. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> I love that. Penelope, when, when I hear your mom talking about it and pointing out all the things, I see a big <laughs> smile on your face. So I hope that means that you're super happy and had fun working on your map. Did you have fun? You did. <laughs> awesome. Fantastic. Thank you for sharing, Penelope. And Calvin G, did if you're able to unmute and you had a question or something you wanted to share, you can go ahead and do that now. Calvin, if you, um, we're going to keep moving on. If you have, um, if you come back to it or have something, you can raise your digital. Oops, I see you're unmuted now. Go ahead. Um, what are we doing today? That's a great question. That's the next thing I'm going to get to. So today we are going to be talking about what we're calling key features of your favorite neighborhood place. So remember, yesterday, we worked on continuing to build the map of the outside of the entrance to your home. And some people had a lot of detail and didn't want to add any more from their extension activity on day three, and that's okay. So some of you worked on making a map of the front yard, the back of your home, or the entrance to your school or the front of your school. So, and part of the extension activity, you went ahead and you started thinking about your favorite place in your neighborhood. Okay, so friends, just to get ourselves started today, we're gonna have a quick little movement break. We've had a lot of people talking little things and then we're gonna get into all about today. We'll be using the chat. You'll have chances to share. And Miss Erica will also be doing a, uh, a little example of her favorite place in her neighborhood. So Miss Erica, you want to go ahead and do our movement break? Absolutely. I thought we could start with stretching our wings like we did earlier this week. So we're going to take our arms and we're gonna reach straight out to the side. And then we're going to take them up, up, up towards the sky and reach as high as you can and wiggle your fingers, wiggle, wiggle, wiggle your fingers and stretch, stretch, stretch. And then bring your arms down, all the way down by your sides. You could even bend down and touch the ground if you want. And wiggle wiggle your fingers towards your toes and then you could shimmy shimmy your shoulders up and down back to sitting up roll your shoulders back take a deep breath and get ready to listen to what we are going to do today all right campers today as i mentioned before we're going to learn about the key features of your community and your favorite neighborhood place. So just as a quick review from this week, very quick, you started by making a simple map of a favorite room in your home, and then you worked on a map of the exterior or outside of the entrance to your home. So, now we're going to play a little review game to identify if something is what we call interior or inside or exterior or outside. So I will name some key features that we've talked about this week. And if that key feature is inside, you will type I in the chat. If it is an exterior or outside feature, type E for exterior. If a feature could be both inside and exterior, you will type B for both. An example of something that might be both could be plants. 
I know Miss Erica and I have plants that are inside and outside. Remember, for each feature we name, you will only start to put your answers when you hear me say, go. And when you, you will stop typing and the chat will be closed when you hear the boing sound. And it sounds like this. It's kind of like a springy sound, which is a, a metal coily, circly, swirly piece. So when you hear that sound, that's when the chat will be closed. So our first feature, I want to know if it's interior or inside, exterior or outside, or both, is the kitchen. Go. I watched the chat. Oh, Penelope said both. Mila said interior. Iris said both. Carter said interior, Ariana said interior, Calvin G said interior. Chat is closed. Chat is Thank closed. you all for your answers. So I have to be honest and Miss Erica, tell me your thoughts. But I was thinking a kitchen is just interior. But then I saw all of these bees popping up and I thought, you know what? Some people have an outside kitchen. They have, a, what is it? thinking of the name of it? Kind of an outdoor, it's just an outdoor kitchen. It might have a, a grill and a, you know, lots of people do have that. And I wasn't thinking about that. So those who put B, thank you for helping me to think outside of the box. All right. We are going to go on to our next key feature to see if it's an indoor or an outdoor or both, or indoor or exterior or both. Couch. Is a couch indoor, exterior, or both? Go. Bonnie said outside, Penelope said inside, Ira, Aaron, Carter, I'll put inside, interior, Ariana said both, Mila said interior. Chat is closed. And you know what? I'm thinking sometimes I actually have something that is kind of like a couch that's designed specifically for outside. I call it a bench, but it does have cushions on it and it does sit outside. So those who put B, I can definitely see why you did that. Mm -hmm. Otherwise a couch is usually an inside feature. All right, we're gonna go on. We have another feature, plants. Go. Penelope says B, Mila says both. Yeah. We did use that as our example, so we might have. We did, and I'm okay with that. <laughs> We're just seeing if everybody was listening when we gave that example. Aaron said both. Absolutely. Lots of bees. All right, the chat is closed for plants. We have four more features we're going to do. The next one is stairs or steps. Are stairs or steps interior, exterior, or both? Go. Penelope said both, Mason said both, Ira, Carter, Ariana, Mila, everyone saying both. Aaron said both. Ooh, the, right, chat. the chat is closed. Thank you, friends. Oh, great job. 
thinking about those plants and remembering from our review and our example that plants can be both an interior and an exterior feature. That was steps. Oops, steps. I thank you. It can also be <laughs> inside or outside, interior Correct. or exterior. All right, campers, we have three more. The next one is the doorbell. Remember until you wait to wait to type your answer until you hear the magic word. Is the doorbell interior or inside, exterior or outside, or can it be both? Go. I think we got some O's for outside. Which I'm is thinking and I am okay with that. Oh, got lost in the chat. I see lots of O's and E's. Yep. And you are correct. A doorbell is an outside or exterior feature. I'm curious if anyone has ever seen a doorbell as an interior or inside key feature. Hmm. I have not. I have not. Ms. Erica, have you? I have not. Too. Oh, Miss Leanne made a good point in an apartment. Yes. That makes sense. Thank you, Miss Leanne. That's where I hadn't thought of that. That was a great example. Absolutely. All right, we have two more features. The next one is the railing. Is a railing an interior? So you'll type I. Exterior, so you would type E. Or is it a B for both? Go. Oh, Penelope, Mila, Mason, all said both. Interior from Ira, Carter said both, Aaron said both, Claire said both. <gasps> chat is closed. Thank you for reading the chat answers, Miss Erica. No problem. And a railing can be both. I have seen railings on stairs outside. I know Miss Erica has a railing on her outside stairs. And there are also railings that can be inside. Sometimes if a house has two floors or in an apartment building. Or are going down to the basement if you have a Yes. Basement. Yes. The last key feature we're going to do for our review today is what we are going to call a storm or a screen door. There are lots and lots of different types of doors and we were thinking specifically about a screen door. So if the screen door is an exterior feature, you'll type E. If it is an interior feature, you will type I. And if it can be both interior and exterior, you will type B. Go. Penelope said E for exterior. <clears throat> Excuse me. Aaron put E for exterior. Carter said B for both. Mila said E for exterior. Claire said B for both. Chat is closed. Great job, everybody. And you know, I was really thinking a screen door is an exterior feature. And I'm curious, Miss Leanne or Miss Erica, have you guys ever seen a screen door as an interior feature? I have not, but Leanne, only if you count going between a house and a porch. That's that what was, I was thinking. Sometimes they're there. Mm -hmm. That's what I was thinking, Miss Leanne, and that depends on how you think about it. So if that's what you were thinking when you typed I or B, 
That is a good answer. All right. Now we are moving on to today. We just wanted to get that little review done because we are talking about things and places outside of our home. So think about is the favorite place in your neighborhood inside or outside? When we say go, if it is an inside place, you will type I. If it is an outside place, you will type O and the chat will close when you hear the sound again. Go. Donnie said inside, Penelope said outside. Mila said outside, Ira said outside. Thank you, Miss Leanne. So I see lots of O's in the chat. So it sounds like a lot of people have a favorite neighborhood place that is outside, but a couple people have inside places. Mm -hmm. Claire, we see that your hand is up. If you'd like to unmute yourself so that you can ask your question, you may go ahead and do so. Um, my question was actually from like earlier. Oh, I'm sorry we missed your hand up. Did we answer your question or do you still have that question? I still have, I, it's actually a comment, not a question. Okay. You can share, go ahead. I actually seen um, a doorbell inside before. Oh. Uh, um, there's doorbells in my school for like classrooms. Oh. I've not seen that. So thank you for sharing. I have not okay. seen that either, Claire. So thank you for that. I always find it fun to see what different people's experiences are. Okay. So the next thing I see Aaron with a physical hand up. Um, Aaron, do you have a comment or a question? You can go ahead and unmute yourself and then we're gonna move on to the next part of our, our day. I have a comment. Um, today is my dad's birthday. Oh, thank you for sharing. Erin, I see a big smile on your face. Does it being your dad's birthday make you happy? Yes. Excellent. Well, I hope you guys get to do something fun to celebrate. And we thank your dad for making sure that you can get on to this. It looked like you might be looking at your dad. Is he there with you? Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, my mom's right, like right next to me, but my dad's a what? Like, like, I like, like, he's really close to the kitchen. That's great. I'm so glad that he's there. And I'm so glad you get to spend your birthday, his birthday with him. All right. So guys, today we are going to give you the chance before we get into crafting, we are going to give you the chance to share your favorite neighborhood place. So we are going to ask we're gonna give a certain number. We're not telling you how many yet. You're gonna to have to listen, but a certain number of you, the first number that put up a digital hand, when we say go, will be able to share their favorite neighborhood place with us, okay? So the first five digital hands, when we say go, will get a chance. So Miss Erica and Miss Leanne, I'm gonna ask for some help too to make sure we catch which digital hands go up first. First five. I'm watching. Ready? Go. I see Carter, Mila. Penelope, Penelope and Mason. Mason, did we get to five? You had three that were actually in participants that I have moved over. Oh, oh thank you. Thank you. So you, I, I see Penelope, Aaron, Mason. 
I think who I missed on there. Did I miss someone? Michelle, did you get? Those are the I, three have I have Penelope, so Mason. I heard Aaron, Mila, and Carter. Does that sound about right? Okay. All right. So I have everybody's name. So if your name was called, thank you, Miss Robin. Miss Robin agreed. She said she sees the same hands we all did. So it's it's good to have some some friends to help us out here. So we're going to go ahead. I'm just going to go down the list in the way I have them written down. So I'm going to start with Penelope. What is your favorite neighborhood place? My favorite neighborhood place. What is it? What is it? Do you want to say it? It's the pool. She just said. The pool. Ooh. Oh, I love the pool too, Penelope. That's a great place. Thank you for sharing. All right. Next, we're going to go on to Mason. My cornfield is green. Green? Yeah. His cornfield. His cornfield. So you like the cornfield? Is that your favorite place? Because it's big and it has a garden that has strawberries with tomatoes with, with bell peppers and it's growing up tall with corn. That sounds amazing. I love it. Thank you so much for sharing. All right, next we have Mila. My favorite place in my neighborhood is the park. The park. Thank Absolutely. you, Mila. All right. Next, we have Carter. Go ahead and tell him. Yeah, my boss. The mailbox, walking oh, the mailbox. mailbox. You love walking to the mailbox. Thank you so much, Carter. That sounds very fun too. I love hearing all of everybody's different favorite places in their neighborhood. It's very, it's very different and diverse. Diverse means everyone has something different that they like. All right, next we have Aaron. My favorite place in my neighborhood is the swimming pool. The swimming, swimming pool. pool. So that's the second one we've heard for swimming pool. All right. Miss Erica, if it's okay with you, I think everybody shared pretty quickly. And I see two other hands that have gone up since we asked for our five. Do we have time to let our last two friends give their favorite places quickly? Absolutely. All right. So Ariana and Ira, we're going to finish up with you guys. So Ariana, you can go ahead and share your favorite neighborhood place. Okay, go ahead. So um, I like the ice cream store. Ooh. Ice cream store. Excellent choice. Yes. Thank you. And our last share for this portion is Ira. So my favorite place is the park. <laughs> park. That's the second one for park too, am I correct? Yes. Excellent. Thank you for sharing, Ira. All right. So we are going to go ahead and think about, we're going to have a little quick movement break before we go into our crafting for today. So I'm going to turn it over to Miss Erica to lead us through our movement break before we get into using our materials to start making a map of our favorite neighborhood place. All right, friends. I really had a lot of fun with this movement break earlier this week, so I thought we should bring it back. And I think today, I again want to make a fruit smoothie. Are we ready? I hope this one was as fun for everyone else as it was for me. So I'm, I'm getting ready. I'm sitting up straight in my chair, getting my hands ready. And I'm going to grab a big handful of strawberries and chomp, 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 chomp. 
And then I'm going to grab a big handful of blueberries and chomp, 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 chomp. And then maybe some bananas. Get a big handful of bananas. Um, nom, 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 nom. Put them in the blender. And then some almond milk. And you can use whatever you want, but I'm going to get some almond milk in there. Glub, 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 glub. And now I'm going to turn the blender on, get ready, and go. Ooh, shake, 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 blend, 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 shake, 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 and stop. Oh, ooh, I feel really good and ready. I hope everybody else does. Are we ready to do some crafting today? I am. All right, so go ahead, Miss Michelle. Friends, when Miss Erica is going to share what she did to make a map or start a map of her favorite neighborhood place, some of the things she thought about are the shape. So remember, just like the map of your room, your favorite outdoor place has a shape, even if it's a park. It might be rounded, it might be circular, it might be square, it might be rectangle, but it's perimeter or outside edges have a shape. Okay, so you're going to start by thinking of the shape or perimeter of your favorite outdoor place. Miss Erica, what is the favorite outdoor place that you thought of to make a map? My favorite outdoor place is the park and it is not far from my house so I can walk there. And I kind of, I did a little bit and I started, but instead of making a perimeter of the park because it's so big so I could get it to fit on the screen, I chose to just use this piece of green. Uh, I believe this is, I can't remember what we called this paper. This is not the Vavel, maybe. I velour? Think that's what this is. The velour paper. That's what this is. So I chose the green because it looks like the grass. And the park would actually be a little bit of a different layout. But like I said, I just, chose to use this piece of paper and my perimeters of the park will be the edges, the rectangle edges of the sheet of paper. And my park, so I'll start with this triangle, double triangle shape. I chose the dark green and the white Vavel and cut them into a triangle. I also chose them again and cut them into circles. So Miss Erica, I just want to share for everyone who heard you. Miss Erica said she has a double triangle to represent trees. So when she mentioned she used white and dark green, her white triangle is a little bit bigger than her dark green. And she placed the dark green triangle on top of the white triangle and as close to the center or middle as she can. She did the same thing with the circles. She has a white circle and a dark green circle. She chose colors. You could choose two different textures if you wanted to do something. And these represent trees, but they represent different types of trees. Her triangle is at the top right side of her page and the circles are at the bottom left side of her page. And these are just ideas of what she's doing to make her map. And if we think about key features, I see that Miss Erica is already using trees. So think about some key features at your favorite neighborhood place, just like Miss Erica did. So another key feature of my favorite place is a stream and it runs through the, the center back of the park. 
So I'm going to place it, I'm using my finger to trace from the left to the right in a bit of a wavy fashion over to the right side of my paper. And I chose the blue uh, bumpy translucent paper and I'm just gonna cut a wavy line. So I've, I'm using a scrap as I've already done this once. So I'm gonna place my scissors about two inches from my hand and then I'm just gonna cut a wavy line and it can be any kind of wavy line. This is your art project. So do what you want to do and highlight your features the way you want to. And Miss Erica, just in case our campers don't know what a wavy line means, oh. a wavy line is something that goes maybe from left to right or top to bottom, but instead of it being straight, it has curved parts to it. So it goes up and down and up and down, kind of like a hill if you were on a hill. Her stream moves and has has those wavy lines, okay? So I also created out of some of that found cardboard as part of the packaging, I cut out a rectangle to create a bench for my park. So now I have a bench and two different kinds of trees. They're the same texture, but they are different shapes to tell me they are different kinds of trees. And then I thought about adding another feature. So I'm going to get my red foam sheet and I'm gonna move my map out of the way because I don't like to cut things on top of other things. And I want to make a walkway for my park. So there's a path that's in the dirt, but I like the way this red foam feels and it is gonna stand out from my background. So I'm going to hold it in the lower left-hand corner and I'm going to start cutting. And this path isn't straight either. So I'm just going to improvise and move my scissors a little to the right and a little to the left. And I'm going to keep doing that. And sometimes it'll be a point and other times it'll be a little rounded like a piece of a circle. And then I get to the top side of the paper. I really like the shape I cut out. It's, it's a little wavy and a little pointy. So what I wanna do is turn my paper. Oh, so now I have the small piece I cut and I rotated it to the left. So now the straight edge is towards my scissors and my right hand. And I'm going to start cutting again. And it may look like the other side or it may not, but this is how I wanna make my walkway. So again, I'm just gonna move my scissors to the left and to the right. In some places, the walkway is wider or it's more narrow. And you kind of end up with that abstract shape as we talked about yesterday. It's nothing that is a circle or a square or a triangle, but it's a combination of all of those pieces. So now I have this neat little walkway and I think I want to attach it to my map. And also I want to stick these to the paper. So I'm gonna get out my sticky dots. And if we remember the sticky dots come in the package that have a kind of a slippery paper covering the top, it's stapled together so you can actually pull the page out and it's okay if it has a jagged edge because I pulled mine out and it has the rough paper feel on one side and the smooth plasticky paper feel on the other. So I have mine paper side up and there's on the, well, depending on how you rip it out, but mine on the lower right hand corner, <laughs> has a spot where I can pull the two 
pieces apart and it makes this sound. Let's listen carefully. Ooh. And I'm going to use a fair amount of these sticky dots. And remember, they are extra sticky. So I'm actually just going to take that whole top piece of paper off. So I have my sheet laying flat on my work table. And I know it's white on white, which makes it hard for contrast. And I'm going to take my blue translucent sheet and lay it right on top of the sticky dots that are exposed. I'm going to smooth it out, being careful not to touch the sticky dots or you'll have very sticky fingers, which is okay too. It's all part of the process. And now I'm going to peel using my right hand uh, to pull up on my translucent paper and my left hand to hold the sticky dots. Pull up. That made such a great sound, Miss Erica. I know, it's pretty fun. Let's see, slide these back over out of the way. Pull my map back down. And now I'm going to place my little stream in my park. Miss Erica, down. can I ask you to take a pause for a moment? Because I see some of our camper friends seem like they're really paying attention. And I see some that look like they are also working on theirs and both are absolutely okay. I'm wondering if any of our friends would like to share some of the key features that they are going to include on their map of their favorite neighborhood place. If any of our camper friends would like to share, you may raise a digital hand. One of the things Miss Erica and I thought about was that maybe starting with five, because some places might have a hundred, some might only have five. So we thought no more than five. If you only share one, that is okay. If you share five, that is okay too. We'd just like to give you guys a chance and know that if you would like to start working on your map while Miss Erica is talking, you are allowed to do so. You can also finish it as part of your extension activity, okay? So I do see one digital hand up. If you would like to share some of those key features you're going to include, I would like to see everyone that wants to share raise a digital hand right now. I see Mila and I see Claire. Claire. All right, I'm gonna start with Claire because I did see her hand up for, for a little while. So I'll start with Claire and then we'll come to Mila. Go ahead, Claire. Um, what am I? Um, so, like, what I'm doing right now is I make um, my favorite place in my neighborhood is the park. And right now I'm just, I'm doing, like, one thing. Like, the park that I go to is really close to my house. It's, like, a block away from my house so I can walk to it. Thank and you. And right now I'm working on the swings and this is the only thing that's going to be in it since it's the only thing I can actually fit on a paper. And so what I'm doing is I'm going to make the swings and then I'm going to put it on a piece of paper. Excellent choice. And I like Claire, the colors you chose, Claire. I like the colors too. I also like... Claire did a, a nice little thing. I wanted to share if it's okay, Claire, I'll try to describe it. She actually cut out some thin, long rectangles and attached them. So it's, they're thin, I call them strips, but they really are kind of like rectangle shaped. And she has one that goes across the top that is white, I think. Am I correct, Claire? Is the one across the top white? No. No, is that one purple yeah. or pink? Is it purple? I think so. Okay. And then she has on the sides coming from the, so that piece would be the top. And then coming down the sides, she had on the end of that are two pieces. 
but then there's nothing at the bottom because the grass would be underneath the swing set. So Claire, thank you for sharing that and letting us describe that to everyone. We're gonna have Mila now go ahead and share some of her, one or more of her key features. A walkway and a gazebo. A walkway and a gazebo? Yes. I love it. Will you hold it up so we can see it? No, my Firefox is still not stuck on. Oh, it's not stuck on yet. Can you tell us what materials or shapes you use to make your gazebo? material. You don't have to hold it up. It's okay. Can you just tell us what you used? And then so what's the, this material? I don't know. Yeah, you just said. The soft material. Soft material? Soft yeah. material. Okay. And you use that for your walkway? Yes. The Excellent. Bumpy, for my walkway, bumpy. It's bumpy. bumpy. Looks like the corrugated paper maybe for the walkway. I love it. Very nice. And what shape did you use for your gazebo? A hexagon. A hexagon? What is a hexagon, Mila? Something that has six sides. Six sides. So Mila's hexagon with six sides represents her gazebo. Mila, thank you so much for sharing with us. I see that Aaron raised a hand. Yes, I think we'll let Aaron share and then we'll come back to you, Miss Erica. So well, go ahead, Aaron. Um, so, so you see this ring, ring on it. You see this? I do see the ring. That is a very nice uh, ring. You know what this, the ring is? What is it? The it's part of the edge of the swimming pool, and <gasps> you know the you see all that blue. That's yes. the swimming pool. And this is the splash pad. Excellent choice. Me, what me, textures me. did you use? I uh, see the colors. What do they feel like? So, they they they. The the concrete's rough, the, the water is smooth, and the edge is soft, and the splash pad's smooth. Excellent choices. I really like that pool. Thank you. Thank you. No problem. I wish and Miss Erica, I just wanted to share that for the other campers, Aaron actually used shapes that were a little bit more rounded, but I'd also call them actually abstract and not really circle or hexagon or anything like that. The edge looks like it may have been a little bit of a print U shape, which is kind of like an oval where it's open on one end, but that was really great. All right, Miss Erica, I will let you um, come back to you if you have additional things you'd like to share about your park or additional tips that might be helpful as our campers are working on making their maps. Absolutely. So I added my water feature. I also used the sticky dots for my bench and I had cut out some additional trees that I'll probably stick on later but I was just trying to keep it pretty simple for my park. Oh, and my walkway, which would kind of go from the corner, the lower right-hand corner up and it does go over. There's a little bridge that goes over the water on the walkway. Um, so that would be maybe what my completed map of my park would look like. So again, not all the shapes are perfect. They can be abstract. They can be different. Um, this is art. And you guys have all the materials left in your kit. So moving forward as your extension activity and 
something you can work with for the rest of the summer, feel free to use those materials and create whatever you want. I know last night I had started to think about creating a, a flat picture of a plant, one of my favorite plants and how that would feel or what I would want it to look like and feel like. So I thought about the materials in my box and I just really started to think about creating some different shapes and, and doing some different things. So I want you all to, to think about that. And I know there is an extension video for today, um, which covers some of finishing up your park and how to use your materials. And Miss Erica, I would also like to let our campers know as they have been doing the entire week, but really, especially today, because there are no more days left. If you finish your map and would like to share it, you can email a picture to Miss Leanne and Miss Leanne will share that with Miss Erica and Miss Michelle. And we love to see the artwork. It actually makes us all smile very, very big and makes us all very happy. So if you would like to share it, we would love to see it. We hope that you have had as much fun this week as we have. And we hope that you continue to use your materials not just to make maps, but to make fun art activities and that you've had a, learned a little something, but really that you got to have some fun. Thank you guys so much for attending. And I'm gonna say thank you as well. This has been a fabulous art camp. Thank you, Michelle and Erica. I'm gonna ask all of our campers to give them a round of applause. Can you take your hands and clap them and move your hands into a circle. And you have given them a round of applause for great instruction. Thank you so very much. Great help. They are right. You have an extension activity that's going to come in your email. And I've also put something called a survey. We actually want to know what you think. So you might need mom or dad's help to help you complete that, but we wanna know what you thought. What did you like? What didn't you like? And let us know because we would like to do this again sometime and hopefully you will join us. I am also going to say thank you to my closed captioner for wonderful, wonderful work. And goodbye campers, have a great summer. Bye campers. Bye everyone.